Hello everyone and welcome back to Small Soldier. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I thought I'd give you a quick update on the progress of the hood so far. You've already seen a detailed long shot of the ship, but I thought I'd go over some smaller component details and show you how I put those photo etch pieces together. And also I thought I'd go through a little bit of a tutorial on how to use your reference books, the instruction sheets, also using these photo etch instructions and how to work all three of them together so that you can come up with the proper way of uh, putting all this photo etch and resin together. So let's take a look at the progress so far. Okay, well, let's first go over some of the details on the photo etch to see here in front of you. If you're interested in seeing how I actually did some of this photo etch, you can check out the link just up in this corner here. And I'll have a video link there on how to uh, deal with photo etch. So first of all, when I'm building the components of the hood, I don't necessarily use all the photo etch. So as you can see in here, it asks for screens to be put in each one of these windows. If I can zoom in here, you can see the screening in here is actually pretty good. So with items like that, I don't really bother to put the photo etch in. I only put it in areas that I feel will enhance the model like here. You can see lad a ladder I've added just because the molded on one doesn't look that great. A screen is added here in this little building. I added as well because I thought that added some nice detail. Inside the lifeboats, it wants you to do a whole bunch more to these lifeboats, but basically I just put in the bottoms and the little oars. And then same thing on the front area here. I added this whole piece of photo edge because it did have some windows and doors and of course the ladders I added in and then some photo etch on the side of these reels. So you can add parts and delete parts just depending on what you're actually trying to achieve with the photo etch and how much detail you want to actually add to it. And here you can see are the masts. I believe this is the, the back mast, the boat. And there's quite a bit of photo etch to this, but th this in my opinion was quicker than scraping off all the mold seams on the plastic parts. And these I feel look just a little bit better than the plastic as well. This is the only part used from the front mast, this plastic, and then the rest is turned brass and some photo etch. These are probably the simplest things that you'll be doing as far as photo etch on a ship. These are just a matter of folding these in half, folding the little reel part in half here, and then adding some super glue in the joints here just to fill that in so you don't see the folded area and sanding that back a bit. And then you get into a little more complex stuff like this. Not so much of these parts here, they're fairly easy to do, but again, you're adding ladders, some doors, and then I'm not sure what these are called. They're actually arms that you have to fold up. And these here were probably the most challenging to do. This one, not as much as the other piece, but you can see, and I'll show you in the instructions in a minute, there's about three or four pieces to this little lifeboat here. And this boat was the most difficult, and I've got about six more of these to do of various sizes. So you know, like this is a different component. These little things up here are different components. This is a different component. That is, that is. And these little boxes and these little pieces here on the ends are all different separate components. And then on the bottom, you've got a propeller with the, with the shaft and a little rudder as well. I'll zoom in on these boats here a little bit so you can see the detail a little better. And you can see the size. I mean, here's my finger, so you see the size of those boats. They're quite small. And I have to say, these little guys right up here were quite difficult to uh, mount in there straight. Same with these little deals back here. I don't know what they are. They're little moorings, I think. This was quite hard to put together here on the front. That was a challenge. Um, but we'll go to the instructions here in a minute and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here's another little lifeboat. 
and this is about four mm, four pieces I think four or five pieces so let's go to the instructions next and I'll kind of go over how I decipher them and how I kind of jump back and forth between instructions and the book and the aftermarket instructions as well all right so when you're dealing with photo etch on a model like this so you've got your instruction sheet with all the plastic parts and then it'll give you options for some photo etch like in here there's little photo etch pieces and these handrails are photo etch pieces which are fine and you get some of that in the kit like here there's a little photo etch rudder and that's pretty much all you get for photo etch on those parts so those little ships I showed you a minute ago are these here so you can see how many components there are to each ship and it can get a little confusing when you're looking between this instruction and this instruction and then you're trying to figure out how these things fold together so then you're going to the book and you're going to be looking in here and you're going to look at the boats and look okay that's what these look like that's what these are and that's what these things are up here so between that this and that it can get a little confusing and I find myself probably doing more jumping back and forth in research than actually building the thing that's why this is, takes so long and as you can see the photo etch instructions are fairly extensive this is only three sheets out of four sheets out of several that I that I have and you can see by the instructions here how much photo etch you can add I won't be adding all of that but a fair amount will be added so you're constantly jumping back and forth between this the book and your plastic instructions in the kit I guess my tip to you when you're building something like this just make sure you are referencing all three at the same time I have made mistakes in the past so you'll be up here looking at this but you're building it you know you can see it being built here but there's things that are omitted or added here that aren't here then you're going back inside the book to see if those parts actually exist now I've been told that there's errors in this book and there's errors in the instructions and there's errors in this Ponto set but I'm not really too concerned about that it's less likely that I'm going to use the instructions as my reference guide. I think these guys and these guys probably did their homework a little more on the ship than Trumpeter would have. So I'm likely to go with what I see in here as far as this historical accuracy goes. For instance, for this part here, when I'm building this, you see that the parts are similar in the plastic, but when you go to the photo etch, you can see there's many more components here and then you have to try and figure out what the heck they're talking about. So they want you to fold this in half and then over here they're showing that this has to be folded but I, you can't really tell. Is that supposed to be folded uh, at 90 degrees or 45 degrees? So that's when you have to go to the book. And then for instance you can see here is the part and you have to take a closer look to determine how these are attached and where they're attached so that's the purpose of having all three of those reference materials in front of you when you're when you're working so you can see this boat up here I'm kind of using as a reference point as to what components go where and how this actually is supposed to be set up and look and then I'm going back over here and referencing these photos which is showing how all these parts are supposed to be folded. So here you can see they're showing all these parts, how they're folded and and it's, it's quite difficult to figure these out exactly what they're trying to tell you to do. I'll look at the finished piece here, which is nice, they give you that. So you have an idea of the way this should look when it's, when it's all built up. That looks pretty close to, well, it looks identical to what they have built up here. But, like I said, again, it, it's hard to decipher from flat pieces as you're building what goes what and what goes where. So there's a lot of trial and error and fitting this and that and kind of dry fitting things before you actually 
bend them and fold them and then glue them together. And another thing that's probably going to help you out more than anything when you're building one of these ships is take an hour or so and go through everything that you have, separate them into bags and mark them. So, you know, there's reels in here and a pair of veins, all your resins in one bag. I've marked everything main mast, top mast, four yards, exactly like in the instructions with each piece in the bag. But as you can see, I spent some time and I've actually written on each bag. And then another thing you might want to do is just the, the permanent marker was rubbing off the bag. So I put some packing tape over it just to stop that from happening. And in here I've got Vickers uh, guns and pom-pom guns. I put them in a little baggie made out of tape just to hold them in place so they're not falling around all over the place. And then you've got your larger barrels here for the main guns. So honestly, this has saved me a ton of time looking for stuff when I'm going to look for it in the bags because this all, all this brass comes in one big bag and it's just a schmozzle of stuff and you have to pull each one out and look at it. This way uh, you've got everything labeled, you've got it all separately bagged and you can find it easy and quick. And for instance here with the photo etch frets, spend the time, go through each fret, you know, see where they start, see where they end. So for instance, this is 451 through 522. Uh, this one's 1048 to 1049. And you can see I've marked each bag with what's in the bag. And that way, again, when you're looking for photo etch, because these things are a nightmare again to look for. Uh, every time you need a part, you've got to look at the bag and then look at the numbers on it. This way it just gives you a quick reference point. If I'm looking for the 900s uh, or the 600s, I can just go, oh, okay, well, that's probably somewhere in this bag, 650 is probably in here, so I'll look through that. So save yourself some time, spend an hour or so, go through it all, separate it, mark it, and you'll be a lot happier that you did because it'll make your life way easier. All right, so now you know where I'm at as far as the ship goes. Uh, you've seen some of the components, uh, the more complex components to the ship, and there will be many more. If you're interested and you'd like to see me build up some of those, like maybe the gun platforms or the pom-pom guns, or maybe one of the turrets, I can do that as a tutorial, or I can do that up as a demo. If you'd like to see that, please leave a comment down below and let me know if that's something you'd like to see. And like I said before, up in this corner over here, there is a link to a photo etch tutorial that I did a while back, if you wanna check that out. That'll uh, give you some ideas on how to put things together and some of the techniques uh, that you need to know for photo etching. So I hope that uh, some of the information I gave you here it was helpful to some people that are just starting out with photo etch. There will also be a link up in this corner here if you wanted to see a review I just did on the German light cruiser Konigsberg and that was a detailed uh, 1700 scale kit with photo etch and gun barrels and the whole deal. Now we're talking even smaller than what you see here. You can take a look and see the details that you can get in one 700 scale ship by looking at that review. So that'll do it for this episode as far as the hood's concerned. I'll keep plugging away and I'll fill you in in a little while on some more progress as I go. So as always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification below, Give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone in this great modeling community. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.